What if I told you that a cheap, readily available fruit contains potent cardioprotective substances that can help you to make a measurable improvement in your cardiovascular health? Right now in the US, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death. But the medications we have to treat cardiovascular disease, like statins, come with a whole host of negative side effects and a marginal benefit to our cardiovascular health overall. Now, there are newer medications in development, but they are expensive and their side effects versus their benefits aren't 100% clear yet. So after working with hundreds of clients who needed answers right now for their heart health, rather than throw my hands up and wait for new, questionable, and expensive pharmaceutical interventions, I went into the research to create a stack of safe, affordable, and effective cardioprotective supplements and dietary strategies to help my clients and also to help you revive your cardiovascular health. So in this video, I'm gonna show you first one of the key cardioprotective supplements that I like to use with my clients. Second, the way that this supplement actually works to improve your cardiovascular health. And third, I'm gonna share with you the dosages and the forms that I like to take so that you can use this product yourself to protect your heart. Now, before we get started, you need to know that supplements won't get the job done alone. The most powerful combination, at least in my experience, to help recover your cardiovascular health is to incorporate a combination of diet, supplementation, and lifestyle changes. So since I'm limited in time to cover the cardioprotective dietary adjustments to make, as well as cover the supplementary adjustments to make, at least in this one video, I created a free pro-metabolic diet calculator and food guide so you can start building a cardioprotective diet in the meantime. Links in the description. So I've had quite a number of clients at this point who have gone to their doctor, gotten their lab work done, and their cardiovascular risk factors don't look too good, whether they're coming from a bioenergetic diet, whether they're coming from a low carb diet, carnivore diet, keto diet, et cetera, or even a standard American diet. And so when they talk to their doctor, their doctor's recommendation typically is to go with a statin. Now, I've had some clients with their doctors start to recommend things like Repatha, which are PCSK9 inhibitors, so some of these newer medications, but a lot of people are quite, and especially uh, my client base, which tends to be more focused on solving things from a dietary standpoint, are quite hesitant to use a statin. Uh, so when they come to me, the question is, well, what can I do? And the first thing is really gonna be the dietary adjustments. But in the meantime, while you're fixing your diet, while you're getting things under control, shifting body composition, components like this, I think it's important to actually manage risk factors and help to lower inflammatory signaling, get the lipids in an ideal spot along the way so that you can minimize your risk as you go through the process. And when you're done, all your values are dialed in. So with this idea in mind, not that you just had to rely on diet or you only had to rely on medication supplements or whatnot. It's like, let's combine both. Let's minimize risk in the meantime. And then let's get, let's dial in the diet and, and go from there. I had to look for compounds that didn't have the side effect profile that we see with statins. And so in my search for this, I actually was looking through compounds that Dr. Raymond Pete had recommended. Um, and some of those compounds included the citrus polyphenols. And so there's two quotes from Dr. Pete here that I want to talk about. These are the quotes that got me thinking and starting to understand some of the benefits of some of these polyphenol compounds that we see for inside the fruits and in some of the vegetables and the herbs and whatnot that we can use. And they actually have very potent medicinal components. So in Dr. Pete's article, The Cancer Matrix, Dr. Pete uh, has a quote here. He says, substances that inhibit inflammation are likely to also inhibit excess coll collagen synthesis, serotonin secretion, and the formation of estrogen. Besides aspirin, some effective substances are apigenin and arginin found in oranges and guava. So these polyphenol compounds that are in our everyday foods can actually have medicinal components. And Dr. Pete's comparing them here to aspirin. He said these flavonoids also inhibit the formation of nitric oxide and prostaglandins, which are important for inflammation and carcinogenesis, increase, increase CO2, which has a variety of anti-inflammatory effects, can decrease collagen formation and tissue collagen content significantly. So basically what he's talking about is that Aspirin can be helpful, but then we also have things like neuringenin and apigenin that can have potent anti-inflammatory effects as well. So it got me started to look into some of these compounds a little bit deeper. There's another quote here that Dr. Pete talks about where he says that a daily diet that includes two quarts of milk and a quart of orange juice provides enough fructose and other sugars for general resistance to stress. But larger amounts of fruit juice, honey, or other sugars can protect against increased stress and can reverse some of the established degenerative conditions. So when we're looking at fruits, the sugars are protective. The potassium component is protective. But another thing that I talk about many times is that the polyphenolic components are very protective. So let me actually show you what these citrus bioflavonoids, these citrus polyphenols can do. So we're going to first look at a broad overview. 
And then what we're going to do here is we're going to get to look at some of these, uh, these trials in humans with higher doses of these polyphenols to see their impact on cardiovascular health. And then we'll talk about some of the mechanisms. And what they say here, the authors, they say consumption of citrus fruits or their juice has been associated with a reduction in cardiovascular events, suggesting that intake of flavonoids found specifically in citrus fruits may be cardioprotective. For example, drinking one glass of orange juice per day has been demonstrated to lower the risk of stroke in men by 25%. And intake of grapefruit was associated with significant reduction in mortality due to coronary heart disease. In larger studies, intake of citrus fruits six to seven times per week in Japanese subjects, so there was 10,000 participants in the study, was inversely associated with cardiovascular disease events, particularly ischemic stroke. So basically where the vessel becomes occluded, not where the vessel breaks and bleeds, but the vessel becomes blocked and leads to damage in the brain. They say similarly, after 14 years of follow-up in the nurse's health study, high flavanone intake through a combination of consumption of orange and grapefruit juices and fruits was associated with a 19% lower risk of ischemic stroke. So basically consuming these fruits, even in the form of juices, because they are high in these polyphenolic compounds, can have a variety of beneficial effects, particularly on the cardiovascular system. And so these are just you know broad association studies. The question is, does, if we give people these polyphenol compounds, do they actually have benefit, particularly in this context of, on cardiovascular risk factors? So we actually have three studies that we can look at here. The first one's a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial that's looking at the effect of a dietary supplement containing artichoke and bergamot, which is a type of citrus fruit, on metabolic and vascular risk factors in individuals with suboptimal cholesterol levels. And so in this study, what they basically did is they had two different groups. One group was going to get a placebo pill, and the other group was going to get this, this uh, supplement that had the artichoke and the bergamot extract. And then they ran this protocol for 12 weeks. Now, this is important. We'll talk, we're going to talk about dosages. The bergamot extract that they had here had 150 milligrams of flavonoids. So we'll hold on to that because we're going to talk about this later when we get to dosages. Now, after 12 weeks, what do we see? The people who had taken the bergamot extract had decreased their total cholesterol by 40 milligrams per deciliter. Their LDLC, their LDL cholesterol, had decreased by 25 milligrams per deciliter. Their non-HDLC cholesterol by 53 milligrams per deciliter. Their APOB decreased by 10 milligrams per deciliter. Their HDLC increased by 3 milligrams per deciliter. Their APOA1 increased by 7 milligrams per deciliter. Their triglycerides de decreased by 22 milligrams per deciliter. Their CRP, a marker of inflammation, decreased by 11%. And then their pulse volume increased by 5.3%. So it's a mark of arterial function. So the lipids decreased, the inflammatory markers decreased, and then the protective, uh, the protective lipoproteins, the HDL and the APOA1, these actually increased in this study. And those are helpful because they can help to re regress plaque formation by pulling the cholesterol and the lipids out of the plaques, bring them to the liver so that they can be detoxified. And so basically we're seeing there's also this improvement in arterial function. So just in 12 weeks of using the supplement, we saw a significant shift in the lipid profile on top of improvements in inflammation and also on top of improvements in arterial function. Now, there were some side effects in the study, but not even close to comparable to what we see with some of the statins. And basically the biggest thing were essentially digestive dysfunction. So what they found in the study is that 2% of the people in the study had gotten a mild side effect. One of the people had gotten dyspepsia, so a little bit of GERD, and then the other people had gotten diarrhea, but they were in the placebo group. So there wasn't really a high amount of side effects from using this. Whereas, again, when we're talking about something like statins, you're seeing myopathy, uh, worsening of blood glucose regulation, potentially mitochondrial dysfunction, et cetera. So you're seeing improvements to your vascular function, a lowering of the problematic or the atherogenic lipids and an increasing of the anti-atherogenic lipids, and you're seeing a, a lowering of the, or an improvement of your vascular function overall without a significant level of side effects. The next study that we have here, this is another randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. So basically, they took people who had elevated lipid levels, they had not taken statins before, and they gave them this combination of the citrus bioflavonoids as well as the olive leaf extract. The participants were given these supplements for about 90 days. And they were instructed to take two 500 milligrams capsules a day for the 90 days. And they were supposed to be separated by 12 hours. And the other group was given a placebo. At the end of the study, we saw a decrease in total cholesterol by eight milligrams per deciliter. The LDL had dropped about eight milligrams per deciliter. ApoB decreased by five milligrams per deciliter. ApoA1 had increased by seven milligrams per deciliter. 
the HDL cholesterol increased by one milligrams per deciliter, triglycerides decreased by 16, but oxidized LDL, one of the major risk factors of cardiovascular disease, had decreased by 33% in this study. And then parooxinase, an enzyme that's involved in plaque regression, had actually increased by 14.5 units per liter. And th these were actually significant values. So the oxidized LDL decrease and the increase in this parooxinase 1 enzyme increase were significant in the study um, just from taking the olive leaf plus the citrus bergamot or citrus polyphenols. Also, liver function values in this study had improved as well, with ALT decreasing by 8 units per liter and GGT a marker of liver function decreasing by 10 units per liter. So another study, we're seeing beneficial change in lipids, but now we're seeing that oxidized LDLs decrease as well as ApoB, LDL cholesterol, total cholesterol, and an HDL and ApoA1 are increasing, liver functions improving, and then the ability of HDL and the systems in the body, including the parooxinase enzyme that can help to degrade plaques, that's actually, actually increasing as well. Now there's one last study I wanna talk about here, and this one actually measured the carotid intimomedial thickness, which is a measure of the plaque formation in the carotid arteries. And we'll talk about what the result here. So they took 80 subjects. And what they did was they gave them a citrus polyphenol supplement that 150 milligrams of flavonoids, and they took this for six months. So they gave this to, and, and what they did is they looked at their, their lipids, and then they looked at their carotid intimomedial thickness and ultrasound of the carotid artery to see if they had any type of plaque formation before they took the supplement and then after. So what did they find at the end of the six month period? Well, first of all, the total cholesterol decreased by 34 milligrams per deciliter. Their triglycerides decreased by 26 milligrams per deciliter. Their LDL decreased by 32 milligrams per deciliter. Now, small dense LDL, which is one of the most atherogenic lipoproteins, the ones that are the most likely to become oxidized and the most likely to deposit into the arterial wall, these decreases, there's, there's different types of small LDL. You have small LDL 3, 4, and 5. Small LDL 3 decreased by 38%. Small LDL 4 decreased by 53%. And small LDL 5 decreased by 67%. And basically, the numbers just basically talk about the size of the small LDL. So as you get to 5, it's much smaller. The particle size is smaller than when you're at 3. Now, the other thing is HDL, the anti-atherogenic cholesterol, actually increased by about 5 milligrams per deciliter. But the most interesting thing from this study altogether is that the, the CIMT value, the carotid intimomedial thickness score, had decreased by 25% after six months. So the plaque formation at the carotid artery from taking the supplement had decreased by about 25%. So basically what we're seeing is we see these association values in the research where we see citrus polyphenols, citrus bioflavonoids have, are associated with beneficial cardiovascular outcomes. And now we have three trials in humans showing a complete shift in the lipid panel as well as a change in, this, in the plaque formation inside the carotid arteries. All right, so the question from this is, how are these citrus bioflavonoids working, right? Because statins see some benefits, but the mechanism by which they work isn't so great, right? Inhibiting HMGA-CoA uh, reductase, which can have impacts on the glutathione enzymes, the deiodinase enzymes, mitochondrial function through the production of the different heme proteins. So it's not really a great way to have these beneficial effects. So what we're seeing with the citrus bioflavonoids is they have a multifactorial effect. So it's not just about lipids. There's multiple components that they're helpful with. So A, we can look if we look at this graphic here, this is a nice summary of it. The citrus bioflavonoids are able to improve endothelial function. So the cells lining the arteries are called your endothelial cells. And the citrus bioflavonoids can protect them. They also can inhibit these macrophages or monocytes from adhering to the endothelial cells. Now, this is important because some of the early initiating steps of atherosclerosis where the immune cells, the monocytes, which are the white blood cells circulating in the blood, they come to the endothelial layer and then they attach and then they start to migrate into this other layer here, which is called the intimal layer, which is right is behind the endothelial layer. And that's where you start to see this plaque formation. So you have improvement in endothelial function and a minimization of the, the immune cell attachment to the endothelial cells. So the next thing that we see is that these citrus bioflavonoids are actually able to prevent these immune cells from gobbling up the cholesterol and becoming these overloaded cells called foam cells, which is, a, again, a key process involved in atherosclerosis. Another piece that we see is that the citrus bioflavonoids are able to help protect the vascular smooth muscle cells, which are involved in controlling the contraction and relaxation of the arteries. So they prevent them 
from um, proliferating and and, beca- and growing too much. And this helps to maintain their function so we don't get vascular stiffness and we don't get uh, a narrowing of the, bless- of the vessels that can lead to an increase in blood pressure. The next thing that we see, or the last thing that we see here, is an inhibition of the lipoproteins, your LDL particles, from moving into the arterial wall with the citrus bioflavonoids. So they're protective at multiple steps of atherosclerosis through, through a variety of mechanisms. The next thing that we see on top of the direct effects of the vasculature is that the citrus bioflavonoids are able to reduce blood glucose and insulin levels. So improve insulin sensitivity as, as well as adjust the lipids directly. So in these papers, what they talk about the lipids is that they can increase the LDL receptor so that the cells are able to take up the cholesterol out of circulation, as well as adjust the output of LDL or the, the LDL particles from the liver by changing the metabolism at the liver. They also can improve the muscle's uptake of glucose. So again, you don't have high levels of blood glucose reaching certain points that can damage the endothelial lining of the arteries. The citrus bioflavonoids can help to minimize those high blood glucose levels by improving the muscle cell uptake. As we talked, as I just mentioned here, the citrus bioflavonoids are able to reduce the amount of lipids that are produced at the liver and the secretion of those lipids as well. They can also help to minimize the inflammation uh, at the adipose tissue and decrease the expansion of the fat cells altogether. And then they also are able to help mi- decrease the insulin secretion from the pancreas and also make the pancreas and the other tissues more sensitive to the insulin that is secreted. So we have an improvement of metabolic function at the liver, the muscle tissue, the fat tissue, and the pancreas, as well as direct effects at the vasculature from these citrus bioflavonoids. So this basically vindicates what Dr. Ray Pete was talking about with the citrus bioflavonoids being able to have uh, beneficial anti-inflammatory effects, as well as helping to have pro-metabolic effects altogether. The next question that we have here, and the last question is, what dose of these citrus bioflavonoids do we need to have to recreate the results and the effects that we're seeing in some of these human studies? Now, most of these studies, most of the products had actually standardized the citrus bioflavonoid content to be about 150 milligrams per day of citrus bioflavonoids. So what I like to do is I like to use a product called Nutribio Bergamot. Now, I don't have any affiliation. (laughs) There's no kickback for me here. And you could basically get two of these capsules per day. You take one with breakfast, one with dinner, and it's standardized. So it has 38% citrus bioflavonoids. And the two capsules will give you a 1,000 milligram dose. So you'd basically be getting a 380 milligram dose of citrus bioflavonoids divided into two doses, one with breakfast, one with dinner. The other thing is I generally like to add olive leaf extract on board with the citrus bioflavonoids. I'm going to talk about olive leaf extract in a separate video, talk about its mechanisms and how they can synergize together. But you want to make sure that your olive leaf extract is very high in all your opane and hydroxytyrosol. The last piece I'll mention here is in these studies. So one of them used citrus bioflavonoids and olive leaf extract, which is great. But another one used the artichoke extract with the citrus bioflavonoids. The reason that they did that is artichoke extract can help to induce the excretion of um, cholesterol into the bile and then induce the flow of bile acids by being a cholagogue. This is can be beneficial, but at the same time, it can create digestive issues. So I'm not as much of a fan of using artichoke extract in everyone. I would use it only in specific people because you can get a higher risk of digestive issues compared to using the citrus bioflavonoids as well as the olive leaf extract. So now that you know citrus bioflavonoids are potent cardioprotectors and you know how to exactly dose them, next you'll want to pair those citrus polyphenols, those citrus bioflavonoids with other potent cardioprotective substances to fully dial in your heart health So watch this next video where I'll show you the exact supplements that I pair with citrus bioflavonoids to help my clients make measurable improvements in their cardiovascular health.